Okay, today we're looking at the Blackmagic Design Smart View Duo, which is a dual 8 inch LCD HD screen. Couple of different input formats. Mm -hmm. John, what have we got on the back? On the back, we have a range of BNC connectors. So you've got your two um, SDI inputs. There's no analog on this. There's a, uh, a nine pin D connector, which is being used for tally. You can see here we've very cleverly made the tally connection. There's a couple of RJ45s, which is actually an ethernet in and an ethernet out. We'll come to that in a minute. USB, power from a little 12 volt power pack, and uh, we've just looped the video straight through this one. So as you can see, same picture on both screens. Okay, now talking picture quality, I, I, reckon, this is, uh, I reckon this is a great little monitor. It's got a few limitations though in terms of viewing angle. What are your thoughts? Well, the first thing I noticed about this, and this, this is what you do when you look at a, a new monitor, is what is the viewing angle? This one is surprising in that uh, from the straight out, the horizontal downwards, the picture tails off very, very quickly. From there upwards, the picture is remarkably consistent. The other thing is, it doesn't seem to matter what the sideways viewing angle is. Unlike a lot of monitors, wherever you were in relation to this, it seems to be much the same picture. So you'd go, well, if the picture tails off so quickly towards the bottom, what use is that? Firstly, if you've got it down like this, you're using it, say, uh, as the monitor on a, on a small on a switching bench. rig on a, or on a flyaway, yeah. uh, you're looking down that way anyway, so that's it. If you mount this in a rack so that it's a, it's a rack of video VU meters, then you're probably not terribly concerned about the, the absolute picture quality. You just mm -hmm. want to know that there's a picture there. But uh, this is really what cute. If, what if I want to stick it yeah, up there? If you want to stick it up there, the well, track. of course, if you stick it up there, you know, you'd be like that. And of course, you'd say, well, you can't see the picture at all. But as soon as you turn it upside down, it, it does the, um, the, does eye the iPad thingy. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah the it just automatically thing. inverts the picture. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't invert the logo, so you have to put up with that. But this is a really, really clever, you don't need to think about it piece of design. So, uh, and it doesn't matter which way you oriented no, it as long as you've got it uh, in the right position, Correct. height-wise. And the other thing you notice, and this is pretty much straight out of the box, the video is looped through the two monitors, and they look remarkably the same. The picture quality is really excellent for a device at this price point. Now, of course, if you want to change the picture, um, there are no knobs. No, there are no knobs. None. All there are is a pair of Ethernet ports on the back. And the idea of this is that you go from a computer into the back of the monitor, probably via a little network switch or something. Mm. Um, and then if you've got multiple monitors, you can cascade. Each monitor has a switch built in, so you can go in, loop, 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 and daisy chain. And uh, once you've done that, you get on your computer, you download the Blackmagic Smart View utility, which then automatically discovers all of these units on your network. We actually tried this. We plugged it into our network, which is, um, and it all worked first go, which is <laughs> very you know, strange. In, in, with my networking skills, that's astounding. But um, yeah, the Smart View utility is, is fantastic. You can see probably that we've got a red tally showing around one of these monitors. Um, tally options are red, green, or blue, and that's all via the D9 connector. Mm. And I like that it gives you a border, not just an LED underneath, because mm. if you flipped it upside down, then the LED would be above and you'd lose track of what you're looking so at. So if you're using these for source monitors, it's it's very easy to tell which one of them is, is online. Mm. Um, if you've got a whole bank of these, uh, you can also set them to different colors. So you can set red or green or blue. Any of the screens can be made to any of the colors. And- uh, I haven't tried putting two tally contacts on at once. So I don't know, maybe it gives you a dual color border, but I didn't finish about the utility. The utility is really cool. It discovers all the screens, you click on a screen. As soon as you click on the screen to select it, it gives you a white border, so you know which one you're dealing with. And then you can adjust uh, brightness, contrast, and saturation, all from one convenient central location. The adjustments are real time. As you drag the slider, you can see the picture change. And the other thing that's real time about this, it's a very, very low latency monitor. So pretty much you connect it to, to the source and you can see as you do that, the monitor is following exactly uh, what's coming into it. Mm. Really, really good. Now the other thing you can probably see, and this is, this is my one little gripe with it, is that uh, we're feeding it a 576i25p signal um, which is a widescreen signal, but mm. it's standard definition mm. uh, via SDI, in fact, out of the camera that we're shooting this on, and it's applied pillar boxing. Now, we think this is just a firmware thing. It'll probably get resolved. There is a USB port on the back, so you can update the firmware. So just, just to reinforce what Jim said, 
there is a built-in switch, as in an Ethernet switch on this. So you just loop straight through. You only need one Ethernet connection coming in and the rest of the monitors can be daisy-chained. They sort out all the interfacing themselves. Mm. And they can do DHCP or fixed IP and all that sort of stuff. You mm. can figure that all of that from the utility. Um, so that's it, the Blackmagic SmartView. It's a little over 700 bucks, which I think for the for the price, what you're getting is bloody amazing. Well, it's like it's 300 like... bucks a screen, beat that. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and the form factor, it, with, minus the connectors, it, it's less than an inch in depth. So if you were building a, a small flyaway and you wanted something lightweight, mm. this is gonna save you a lot in terms of weight and, um, and lifting. Can you imagine, like even two, two nine inch, Tube monitors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the weight RU. difference is about what? 12, 15 kilos? 3RU yeah, as huge. opposed to 5RU for standard monitors um, in the same, uh, you know, with the same picture. Mm. And they're not as big, but they, they do also have a 17 um, inch version, I think, on the way. Oh, and let's hope that they've got a, uh, a four way unit coming. Mm. So that's it. Blackmagic Design, Smart View Duo.